There's some new features inside of Google Gemini Live on the iPhone app that I haven't really seen anyone try. And I don't know if this is new, but I do think this is worth paying attention to. So uh, I might finally be using Google Gemini for something. All right, if you're new here, what's going on? Let me quickly tell you what this is. My name is Jordan Wilson. I'm the host of Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast and free daily newsletter helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI to grow their company and their career. So most days we do this little thing called AI and five, a little quick five to 10 minute tip, trick, or tutorial to help you get the most out of AI. So uh, please sign up for our newsletter and also subscribe to this channel. All right, let me tell you what this is and a little different setup today, FYI. So normally I record with my iPhone, but I'm gonna be showing you this live. So we actually have my iPhone right here on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, and we're gonna be going through this live. So uh, I saw a report uh, last week. So Google just released Gemini, a dedicated Gemini app for iPhone, which also includes access to Gemini Live, which is its a equivalent to chat GPT's advanced voice mode. So this is a live neural AI voice assistant uh, with low latency that is powered by Gemini, the large language model. Uh, so this is, like I said, brand new. And I saw this report last week that said Google Ge Google's Gemini Live may let you talk to your uploaded files. Uh, and it said that essentially in some upcoming code, it found an issue, or, it, it, or sorry, it found a uh, it essentially found some code that said you may be able to talk to your files. Here's why that's important. Right now in ChatGPT's advanced voice mode, you cannot do that. You cannot upload files, it cannot access the internet, and you cannot type to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. As an FYI, uh, I'm gonna be doing this, uh, showing you kind of both left and right on my desktop and on my um on my uh, iPhone app. So here's the thing, this does not work. I have paid Google accounts on my Google Workspace account, my work email, and my personal email as well. So this only works on my personal email, even though I have all beta features and Gemini features enabled on my business workspace plan, it does not work bummer all right anyways enough let's get right into it and hopefully you can hear this the audio is not going to be great because it's actually coming from my speaker i can't actually uh record myself uh and the audio input because i'm using uh quick time here all right but hopefully we, you can hear this let's go ahead and take a listen hey gemini what's going on not much just hanging out in the digital world, waiting for interesting questions. How about you? What's can you, going on? Can you tell me today's date? Today is November 18th, 2024. Cool. What's going on with Microsoft today? Microsoft's been in the news lately for a few reasons. They've been making big investments in AI, especially with their partnership with OpenAI, the creators of... What about their PC. conference? They're also facing some regular... Are you talking about Microsoft Ignite? Yeah, that their where's that at? Focusing on... This year's Microsoft Ignite is happening in Chicago, Illinois. It's a hybrid event, so you can attend in person or online. All right, so I just clicked pause. Otherwise, the Google Gemini Live Assistant is going to continue uh, to listen to me. So the voice is actually really good. It's not as responsive as ChatGPT's advanced voice mode. However, I don't, I don't hate that because I think we're going to be able to get this to work. So now I am in the same chat, okay? So let me just, uh, oh, no, here we go. So here is the chat. So I just said, hey, can you hear me okay? You know, I said, can you tell me today's date? So now I'm looking at it on my computer on the same account. So here's what I'm gonna do now, and I don't know uh, if you have to do this on the desktop for it to work, but like I said, one of the biggest reasons why I don't use, and a lot of people I think don't use advanced voice mode from ChatGPT right now more, is because you can't type to it. As soon as you type, it no longer works in advanced voice mode. Uh, it can't access the internet, which we just saw Google Gemini Live does. And then the third big downside to ChatGPT advanced voice mode is you can't upload files, uh, right? So that makes it not useless, but it makes it really uh, limited in the use cases. But 
it's actually kind of sometimes working in Google Gemini. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I have a transcript uh, right here that I'm going to upload. It's 19 pages. It is from this podcast uh, that I had with Scott Beechuk uh, from Norwest Ventures. All right, so I'm going to upload it um, into Google Gemini. Let's see, right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and upload this. Upload files. There it is. And I actually, I'm gonna just ask it a simple question. I'm gonna say, what is the name of this? Uh, uh, I'm gonna say, give me a two sentence summary of this file. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. All right, so now it's gonna go through. Uh, it hopefully should do this okay. Okay, it did a good, uh, decent, good enough job there from uh, Google Gemini. So now what I'm gonna do, is give me a second here so i don't know if you have to do this little workaround uh for google gemini live on the iphone to uh access your files but it's the only way that i could do it that it worked consistently so now let's go ahead and again oh we're gonna end this so now on the right hand side again this is live my phone right here right i'm gonna go back into this Okay, and there we go. On the right-hand side, you'll see now it's it's showing the same thing. So just to get out of this, I don't wanna corrupt the chat. All right, so now we just have it on the right-hand side. So now I'm gonna try to talk uh, and get more information from this file. Let's see if it works. In my initial testing, sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't, but let's give it a try. Hey, can you tell me more specifics from the file I just uploaded about what Scott said about AI agents? Scott thinks AI agents are going to be really useful for automating repetitive tasks and freeing up humans to do more creative and strategic work. He also thinks that AI agents could help businesses make better decisions by providing them with insights from huge amounts of data. Scott also talked about some of the challenges with AI agents, like the need for clear goals and guardrails to make sure they're used responsibly. That's pretty good. Can you tell me, that's pretty good. Can you tell me some more specific things? that he talked about, please take your time and look through the document that I uploaded. Okay, diving deeper, Scott talks about a specific tool called GitHub Copilot. It's basically an AI assistant that helps programmers write code faster and with fewer errors. He seems really excited about the potential for tools like this one. Also, Scott mentioned that we're at the point where AI agents can actually talk to and work with each other. It's early days, but it could totally change how we build complex systems and solve problems in the future. Talk more about what Scott said about multi-agents. I do not have enough information about that person to help with your request. I am a large language model. So if you look in the file, if you look in the file that I uploaded, uh, which I know you can do, uh, Scott in that file talked a little bit about multi-agent environments. Can you take your time and look through that file and tell me a little bit more about what he said? Yes, Scott does talk about multi-agent environments in the file you uploaded. He gets really excited about the possibilities when you have multiple AI agents working together. He thinks it's going to lead to more complex problem solving and could even revolutionize things like supply chain management. But he also mentioned that getting these multiple agents to cooperate can be tricky. There's a lot of technical challenges to figure out to make it work smoothly. Did he say anything about supply chain management? I didn't really see that. Supply chain management specifically. He does get excited about the possibilities of multiple AI agents working together, but doesn't name any particular applications for that. In that file, can you tell me, was there anything about Work Lab? Yes, there's a mention of Work Lab in the file. It says that you can get the latest insights on AI and the future of work there. Okay, what else did Scott talk about in that file? Did he say anything about sci-fi? I do not have enough information about that person. Can you look with your request? Can you look in the file that I uploaded and see if Scott said anything about sci-fi? I do not have enough information about that person. 
So don't worry about the person. So don't worry about the person. Can you please closely analyze the file that I uploaded? And in there, Scott should be talking about sci-fi. Can you tell me a little bit more? Take your time and please carefully analyze the document that I uploaded. So I'm not finding anything about sci-fi in the document. There's a mention of science fiction when it comes to imagining the possibilities with AI, but nothing specific about the sci-fi channel. No, I'm not asking about the sci-fi. I'm just asking if there's any information in the document that I uploaded about science fiction or sci-fi. If so, can you please tell me specifically what it is? There's a mention of science fiction on page three, but it's not about the sci-fi channel. The speaker talks about science fiction when they're discussing how people imagine AI agents in the future. It's more about the possibilities of AI, not the TV channel. Correct. Yeah, I wasn't really talking anything about the TV channel, but that's okay. So is there any mention in that document anything about California? I don't see anything about California in that document. Can you try again? Can you maybe uh, take your time and look through the document that I uploaded and see if there's any reference to the state of California? I still don't see anything about California in that document. All right, so I paused it. So you saw some things seemingly, uh, it did a great job and it went through and it found information in this document, but then in other instances, it didn't. So it's not consistent yet. So I would not suggest uh, you, you know, using this for actual business uh, use cases right now, but it seems like when you can get it to work, it works pretty well, right? Uh, but it has some issues carrying over the context from question to question. So you saw when I was asking it specific questions uh, about something in the document, it usually did a pretty good job. But if I asked a follow-up question, uh, it almost forgot the context of what we had just talked about. So uh, I'm gonna try just one more thing and then we're going and then we're going to uh, wrap this up. So I'm just gonna say, tell me uh, a little bit about Norwest, uh, Norwest Partners uh, and we'll see if it can uh, kind of go through and say anything about this thing right here, like 60 years, uh, et cetera. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that one more time. Hey, in the document that I just uploaded, there's some information about Norwest Partners. Can you tell me what's in there? I'm not finding anything about Norwest Partners in the document you uploaded. Oh, also, just so you're aware, I'm not a financial advisor. So please don't rely on me for financial advice. All right, hey, uh, I'm, I'm not relying on you for financial advice, but I did just upload this document called Scott AI Agents. And there's some information in there about Norwest Partners. Can you look at the document that I uploaded and tell me a little bit about Norwest Partners? Okay, I'm still not finding anything about Norwest Partners in that document. All right, can you tell me anything else about the document that I uploaded? Sure, so it seems like this podcast is all about AI agents and how they're gonna be used in the workplace. The speaker, Scott, is really excited about the possibilities. He thinks AI agents are going to be able to do things like automate simple tasks. All right, cool, thanks. Insights from huge amounts of data. That's all. So I... All right, so is it working 100% yet? No. Uh, is this a step in the right direction? Absolutely. Uh, so like you saw in the live demo, there's some pros and there's some cons, but the great thing is with the new Google Gemini Live, well, it has some sort of document support, even though it is not consistent at all. But two other things is you can type information and then continue to keep using it. So let's just go ahead and uh, show that right now. So I'm gonna go in here. Here is... Uh, Here's the last uh, the last inf piece of information that I put in there. I can go, I'm gonna click something here. I'm just gonna copy and paste this information. I'm gonna say summarize this, all right. I don't even know if it's going to be able to summarize this. All right, I don't think it. Let me try one more time. 
paste is a little slow there. All right, there we go. So right away, there's three big benefits. Like I said, number one, there is some type of file support, even though it is not that great. Number two, it has access to the internet, which is huge. Advanced voice mode does not have that. Right now, Co uh, Microsoft Copilot's um, kind of more advanced voice mode does not have that yet either. So uh, if you do have a paid Google Gemini account, you can right now use Gemini Live. You have to download the uh, Gemini app on your iPhone and you can interact with the real world, which I think is great. And then number three, we're gonna give that uh, one quick test right here. Uh, I do believe that you can continue to use uh, advanced voice mode after, or sorry, the, uh, the more neural uh, mode. Let's see right here. I don't know why that's showing up as a... Uh... All right, let me just see. Can you tell me about Google Learn About? Google's Learn About is a new tool that helps you learn about any topic you want. It's like having a personal tutor that can explain things in a clear... So that's great, right? So I just pasted a bunch of information in. So that's uh, three features, well, we'll say two and a half, that right now Gemini Live has that you do not have access to in ChatGPT advanced voice mode. All right, I hope this was helpful. I know it was a little longer. Uh, please, if you haven't already, go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for our free daily newsletter, and we'll be back for another AI in five. Thanks, y'all.